Hey, home skillet, are you ready to get jiggy with it? Because this episode of Watch Mojo's Deep Dive is the bomb. Booyah! Okay, I'll stop. But in case you didn't figure it out, we are about to delve into the bygone decade that was the 1990s. Oh, what a glorious time it was. And we're going to kickstart things with a look at some of the biggest trends of the 90s. So, kids, go get your parents and ask them if they took part in any of these things. Give us the money! Elmo knows where you live! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 trends of the 1990s. It's not even 8.30 and Murray is paging me. For this list, we're looking at the most prominent cultural trends from the years 1990 to 1999. Which of these 90s crazes do you miss the most? Number 20. Bowl Cuts If you were a kid in the 90s, you might have memories of your parents saving money on haircuts by simply putting a bowl over your head and snipping around it. Pretty woman, the kind I like to meet. Pretty woman, I don't believe you, you're not the truth. Of course, the bowl cut is a hairstyle that long predates the 90s with figures like Mo from the Three Stooges donning this particular do. Heck, even the Beatles had their own mushroom cut versions. But many 90s heartthrobs famously sported this look also. Looking at you, Leonardo DiCaprio. Unfortunately, the bowl cut made many look less like Jack Dawson and more like Lloyd Christmas. Pardon me, Mr. Perfect! I guess I forgot that you never ever make a mistake! Number 19, The Macarena. Going to a wedding reception in the 90s? The question wasn't if the Macarena would be played, but when. This song by Latin pop group Los Del Rio took the world by storm in the 1990s. This was particularly due to its fun yet simple choreography. A remix by the Bayside Boys even topped the Billboard Hot 100 for 14 straight weeks. The tune got so big that the 1996 Democratic National Convention even had political figures doing the famous dance. While the song's popularity understandably declined in later decades, any dance floor with the Macarena playing is definitely one we want to be on. Number 18. Tickle Me Elmo In the 90s, Tickle Me Elmo dolls were all the rage. Unfortunately, we mean that literally. This may very well be the last Tickle Me Elmo to be found in the Bay Area, but he's already sold, and when we brought him out into the store, we caused a near riot. This shaking and giggling doll, based on the beloved Sesame Street character, was such a hot commodity that violence broke out among many shoppers desperate to get their hands on one. We can't tickle Elmo no more. Goochie goochie go! No means no for Elmo! Ow! Some sought it out so they could resell it at a huge markup. One million Tickle Me Elmo dolls were sold in 1996 alone. One can hope they made millions of 90s kids very happy. At least, that's how Elmo would have wanted it. Number 17. Raunchy Comedies Some of the most beloved comedies in the 90s were not only high-grossing, but, well, highly gross. <laughs> Movies like There's Something About Mary, American Pie, and the Austin Powers films pushed the boundaries of good taste farther and farther. It got weird, didn't it? Yeah. I knew it. You haven't called. Look, we talked about this. We promised each other it wouldn't get weird. Many of the infamously raunchy moments led to word-of-mouth buzz, making the movies in question must-watch flicks. While we can't describe these scenes in detail, just know that they succeeded in making us laugh while subsequently making us gag. Let's just say it took us a while to look at an apple pie the same way again. Well, we'll just tell your mother that, uh, that uh, we ate it all. Number 16. Cartoons Television cartoons have obviously been around since the advent of the telecommunications medium, but the 90s gave us something truly special when it came to animated programming. Shows like Doug, Rugrats, The Ren and Stimpy Show, and Ed, Ed, and Eddie are just a few examples of exemplary cartoon shows from the decade. Hey, Double D! What took you so long? Oh, hello, Eddie. So what are you doing? Of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Disney's afternoon offerings such as DuckTales and Goof Troop. And let's not forget that The Simpsons was arguably at its best in the 90s and that SpongeBob SquarePants began just as the decade was ending. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have some rewatching to do. I'm ready! 
Number 15. Overalls Overalls were originally designed for laborers such as farmers to keep their clothes clean while working. But in the 1990s, they could be seen on fashionistas as well as farmers. In fact, all you needed to hit the town were a pair of overalls, some sunglasses, and cute shoes. <laughs> and if celebrities like Jennifer Aniston and NSYNC were wearing them, who are we to say no? Should the straps be undone, though? You know it. Overalls are one 90s fashion trend we stand by, even if we seldom needed to actually protect our clothes from anything. I'm a city boy, you know? I, I got to get out to the lawn. I got to get out to the club and get my little groove on. Talk some of this. Yeah, man, man. Now, what other clothing crazes can we take from farmers? Number 14. Waif looks. The motto, bigger is better, might have reigned supreme in the 80s, but in the 90s, things were getting smaller, namely supermodel waistlines. While we were used to models being svelte, the 90s took it to a whole new level. Models like Kate Moss garnered just as much attention for their physiques as they did for their bold fashion sense. How ready was Kate Moss when Calvin Klein made her an icon overnight? The 80s were over and the 90s to me, represented something different, something more natural, something less flashy. This trend also sparked worry about how young women might feel when comparing their bodies to those of supermodels. It might have looked good on the runway, but it sure wasn't a healthy look to emulate. But was Kate really to blame for the upsurge in the use of emaciated models, such as the painfully thin Tanya Court? Or was Kate simply another product of the fashion environment? Number 13, Pogs. Before NFTs, we were collecting a different kind of colorful tokens. Of course, these were typically found in the schoolyard and not the computer. Pogs were cardboard discs inspired by the game Milk Caps, which was prevalent in Hawaii. In the early 1900s, Japanese immigrants settled in Hawaii and brought the game with them. Over time, it evolved into a version played with milk and juice caps from a local dairy company in Maui, eventually renaming it Pogs after their juice that was made out of passion fruit, orange, and guava. Get it? The 90s saw Pogs become popular not just for gameplay reasons, but as collectibles. Kids would play one another in hopes of winning the pot and taking home some new Pogs. If that sounds a little like gambling to you, you're not alone. Many schools banned Pogs for encouraging gambling, as well as the general distraction they caused. And they weren't wrong. I got some cool Pogs. Elf Pogs. Remember Elf? He's back! In pog form. You traded my soul for pogs? No! Close that door, you're letting the heat out! Number 12, virtual pets. If your parents wouldn't buy you a puppy in the 90s, it was no problem at all. The 1990s pet of choice was one that didn't shed on the couch or have an accident on the carpet. My Tamagotchi angel so heavenly. I love its pearly gate color. When I feed mine, I tap the touch screen and keep the bad, bad away. Well, mine sleeps like a little angel. Virtual pets like Tamagotchi and Giga Pets were a must-have toy for kids of all ages. Their needy features meant we got a lot more attached to them than we did our other toys. Giga Pet! If you want your Giga to grow bigger, you gotta figure how to care for your Giga. Baby wants to play! It also meant that we were woken up at odd hours of the night to take care of them. And if we didn't, well, these 8-bit animals would go up to virtual pet heaven. Yikes. Number 11. Hip-hop fashion. Hip-hop took off in a big way in the 90s. And it wasn't just the songs. People were also dressing to look like their favorite rappers, such as Kid and Play, Salt and Peppa, and the Fresh Prince himself, Will Smith. This meant bright colors, oversized shirts, and plenty of denim. The rise of gangster rap soon led to styles that weren't quite as flamboyant. This included iconic looks like Tupac's bandana. Plus, who can forget all the amazing jewelry? Watching music videos on MTV helped introduce young viewers to artists they wouldn't have otherwise known about. Yep, 90s rappers certainly made a bold statement with their lyrics and their fashion choices. Number 10. Boy Bands 
Male vocal groups had existed in the past, but the 90s ushered in a new era with the rise of the boy band. When you say that I want it that way. Groups like the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC captured hearts around the world with their magazine cover good looks, elaborate choreography, and songs that ranged from party anthems to soulful ballads. And it wasn't just the boys making waves either. Girl groups like the Spice Girls hit it big in the 90s too. Okay, so a lot of these groups were cheesy and their styles are definitely of their time, but we were always excited to hear I Want It That Way on the radio. Heck, <laughs> we still are. Number 9. Rave Culture In the 90s, warehouses weren't just for working. Dance parties known as raves made their way from Europe to North America. In large, open venues, DJs played rhythmic electronic music out of subwoofers so loudly that you couldn't tell the bass beat from your heartbeat. Like Woodstock, a desert rave attracts thousands of people of all kinds. Everybody's welcome. Like the hippies of another era, ravers say they all come in peace just to experience the event and each other. You could also count on seeing plenty of wild, colorful outfits, not to mention a plethora of glow sticks. These parties could go on for 24 hours and often caught the wrath of law enforcement for being unlicensed and containing illegal activity. 900 ravers were issued citations for $325. Surely something to rave about. The offense? Aiding and abetting the consumption of alcohol in an unlicensed public setting. Well, the party had to end eventually, but it was fun while it lasted. Number 8. Coffee Culture Learning that tall apparently meant small was just one way coffee culture dominated our lives in the 90s. We also had to learn the difference between a cappuccino and an espresso. Yeah, we all thought we were hot stuff with our hot specialty drinks. The whole purpose of places like Starbucks is for people with no decision-making ability That's whatsoever good. to make six decisions just to buy one cup of coffee. Short, tall, light, dark, calf, decaf, low-fat, non-fat, etc. Plus, the Starbucks boom meant that there were drinks we could have with friends that wouldn't result in potential hangovers. The decade also ushered in an influx of hip independent coffee shops. Although we have to admit they were not as fun as 90s sitcoms made them out to be. Central Perk, anyone? <laughs> Number 7. Teen Television We'll never forget hanging out with all our amazing friends in the 90s. Let's see, there was Dawson Leary, Joey Potter, Donna Martin, Dylan McKay, and okay, those weren't our real friends. But we certainly grew close to the characters featured on teen-oriented shows like Dawson's Creek and Beverly Hills 90210. Come on, where are we going? Field trip. TV in the 90s captured the teenage brain like few eras have, with fantastical shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer also finding room for human emotions. I know what you're after. That's not what I'm looking for. Are you sure? I'm way sure. My mistake. The actors on these shows might have looked a lot older than us, because they were, but we would have done anything to hang out with them. Number 6. The Rachel Friends may have aired once a week, but we were constantly reminded of its existence. Case in point, the popularity of The Rachel, a layered shoulder-length cut worn by Jennifer Aniston on the show towards the end of the first season. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> The 90s saw an estimated 11 million women get this cut. Although the Rachel was popular for its beauty and versatility, there was one person who wasn't particularly fond of it, Jennifer Aniston. The Emmy winner found maintaining it to be a major hassle. I don't know how to make it look like that. I just, you know, so yeah. It, that must have been hell. It was yeah. a little bit. It was just, I wouldn't say hell, because there are worse things than, than that. <laughs> Fortunately for Aniston, she got to wear other hairstyles on the show. As for Friends, we think it ended up doing okay. Number 5. Beanie Babies How do you turn something as common as a stuffed animal into the hottest new trend? Answer: 
fill it with tiny pellets and give it a birthday. It is so great that you always include the Beanie's birthdays. Thank you. Children, children want to know when their toy was born. Beanie Babies were one of those 90s sensations you could only understand if you were around at the time. If you wanted one, you had to act fast, because some designs didn't last long. Of course, you might find the sold-out Beanie Baby you wanted on eBay. For thousands of dollars, that is. Many saw them less as toys and more as an investment opportunity. On eBay, the average selling price was about $35 per Beanie Baby, which isn't much, but it was the, you know, seven times the retail price. So, I mean, people were buying these as an investment. I mean, it's, it's really, really hard to imagine that. <laughs> While undoubtedly cute, Beanie Babies eventually saw their bubble burst. We all knew one thing, though. You should never cut off the tag. Number four, extreme sports. Rebellion and athletics don't always go hand in hand. The 90s, however, had no problem combining the two into one thrilling category, extreme sports. Are you kidding me? The popularity of adrenaline pumping sports like skateboarding, snowboarding, and BMX biking suddenly made baseball and football look a lot less cool. This was also a new era of athletic heroes, like skateboarder Tony Hawk and surfer Kelly Slater. But while they made it look easy, success in these sports requires hours upon hours of practice. We might have dreamed of making it to the X Games, but we were just as happy goofing around at the skate park with our friends. Number three, WWF. Another kind of intense athletic showcase that dominated the 90s was pro wrestling, specifically the action found in the World Wrestling Federation, or WWF. Now known as the WWE, this organization ushered in a new generation of superstars whose physiques were matched only by their charisma. The Federation's Attitude Era, with iconic figures like Kane, The Rock, China, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, made it feel like anything could happen. Stone Cold! Stone Cold! It's here! Get your guns out! He's gonna crash! Give me a party! Hit the ring! Oh, yeah! Oh, you got me and by turning the tide on a bitter war with rival group WCW, the WWF ended the decade as the premier place for hard-hitting entertainment. Number 2. High-Tech Communications They may seem antiquated in this age of smartphones and wireless internet, but in the 90s, technology the likes of beepers felt revolutionary. The idea of getting in touch with someone while out and about was incredible. A clunky cell phone was definitely preferable to waiting for a turn at the payphone. I totally choked. My father is going to go ballistic on me. <sighs> Mr. Hall was way harsh. He gave me a C minus. <laughs> well, he gave me a C, which drags down my entire average. Bye. I'll call you, okay? Yeah. While the internet is arguably bigger than it's ever been, the 90s was the first time many got on the World Wide Web. The wonders of chat rooms and other online spaces fill us with a special kind of nostalgia. A new way to use your computer to communicate, have fun, and get instant news and information. Technology is always improving, of course, but the 90s saw it reach an exciting new peak. Number 1. Grunge The 80s were a decade of flash and excess, especially with regard to music and fashion. So it's only fitting that the 90s went in the opposite direction. None of this hairspray. We're going to wear flannel. We're going to talk about our feelings. But we're still going to rock. And we're still going to get laid. Grunge was a trend defined by not being trendy. At least in theory. Denizens of this subculture, which took root in the Pacific Northwest, wore clothes off the thrift store rack, not the runway. Put on a flannel shirt and go a few days without shaving, and you were the coolest person on your block. And of course, there wouldn't be grunge without bands like Stone Temple Pilots, Soundgarden, and Nirvana. Their angsty lyrics and searing riffs were the stuff of legend. We're not wearing nearly as much flannel these days, but we will always have a soft spot for grunge. Not to age myself, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with the 90s. But if you're anything like me, then you know just who were the coolest celebrities of the time. I mean, many of them are still cool today. 
But regardless, we've got a list of the coolest of the cool from the 1990s, and it's coming your way right now. Now, did you ever, like two years ago, 18 months ago, did you ever think that saying your name would cause this kind no of reaction? Way. No. no? Didn't no. How did you get so famous? What do you think it is? I don't know. I think it's down to the fans. I think they like to see people up there having fun who are yeah. just like normal, all right? Yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 coolest people of the 90s. Oh, I see. It's the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. I'm a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. Of course, I'm a Terminator. Listen to me very carefully, okay? You're not a Terminator anymore, all right? You got that? Whatever you call him, call him this, the greatest of his generation. For this list, we're looking at the most influential and admirable figures who were particularly prominent between the years of 1990 and 1999, even if they were cool and famous before or since. Who did you look up to in the 90s? Number 20, Robin Williams. If you were a 90s kid, you had to love Robin Williams. The beloved late comedian could make us both laugh and cry in so many of his roles, whether they were live action or animated. You wish of me. The ever impressive. The one contained But never duplicated. 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 Genie of the lamp. Right here, direct from the lamp. Right here for your very much wish fulfillment. His mix of energy and emotional intelligence helped make films like Aladdin, Jumanji, and Mrs. Doubtfire unforgettable. His more dramatic performances were also exceptional, and he received a well-deserved Oscar for Goodwill Hunting, playing Matt Damon's warm-hearted therapist. You move, Chief. What ultimately made Williams so cool was his commitment, no matter the assignment. He could be starring in a movie, giving an acceptance speech, or simply doing an interview, and he would always give it his all. Number 19, Antonio Banderas. Few people can be said to truly ooze charisma, but Antonio Banderas absolutely does. In the 90s, the Spanish actor rose to the spotlight for American audiences with roles in movies like Philadelphia, Desperado, and Interview with the Vampire. By the time The Mask of Zorro was released, he was a bona fide Hollywood movie star. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. As New York Times film critic Janet Maslin put it, Alejandro Murieta was, quote, the role that Antonio Banderas was obviously born to play. Not only is Banderas incredibly handsome and charismatic, but he also has a great sense of humor about himself. What is cooler than someone who doesn't take themselves too seriously? Number 18, Winona Ryder. We thought Ryder was so cool in the 90s, and we still do. This is one celebrity who just exudes coolness. Her unpredictable clothing choices, whether leather jackets, blazers, or band tees, showed us that fashion is about more than high-class heels and expensive jewelry. Her roles in movies like Edward Scissorhands and Little Women didn't give audiences a choice. We all fell under her spell of coolness before we knew what hit us. Daddy. We have to talk about this reasonably. I have loved you since the moment I clapped eyes on you. What could be more reasonable than to marry you? We'd kill each other. According to Rolling Stone magazine, Ben Stiller has been quoted as saying, It's funny, girls really like her and guys really like her. Every guy I've ever talked to has a crush on her. Years later, not much has changed. With her work in Stranger Things, the crushes and admiration only continue. Do you understand me? Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you, and good day. It's been exactly one minute, Joyce. That's one minute too long. Number 17, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come with me if you want to live. It's okay, Mom, he's here to help. It's okay. We still have plenty of cool action stars, but few come close to Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 90s. The Austrian bodybuilder turned actor had our blood pumping throughout all of his action films. The Terminator franchise sequel, Conan, 
Total Recall and Eraser all managed to keep us on our toes with Schwarzenegger's impressive performances. His comedies like Kindergarten Cop and Junior are equally brilliant. While there were a few misses, like his rather campy performance as Mr. Freeze in Batman and Robin, Schwarzenegger's charisma has always remained as big as his muscles. Allow me to break the ice. My name is Freeze. Learn it well. Voice the chilling sound of your doom. Critic Roger Ebert credited Schwarzenegger's humility, sense of humor, and sensitivity, among other qualities, for his rise to fame. The muscles are cool, but the later governor of California was even cooler. Number 16. Keanu Reeves Honesty Time How many of us have fantasized about being Neo or Johnny Utah? Keanu Reeves, in the 90s and beyond, exuded a kind of coolness that suggests he's not bothered by anything or anyone. Perhaps that's not surprising, given that his name is Hawaiian for cool breeze over the mountains. But the beloved Reeves always finds a nice balance. He doesn't act like he's superior to anyone or unwilling to be a little shy. <laughs> no way! Yes way, Ted! We're fully programmed to do it. Yeah! And we want to do it, too. <laughs> he's a natural comedic talent, as seen in the Bill and Ted films, and has received plenty of adoration from his co-stars and directors, including Gus Van Sant, who praised Reeves' mix of charisma, good looks, and innocence. We have one word for Keanu Reeves and his coolness. Whoa. Number 15. Alicia Silverstone If you wore a yellow plaid blazer in the 1990s, you were probably influenced by fashion-conscious Cher Horowitz in the classic teen comedy Clueless. Ugh, as if! Although Alicia Silverstone had made her debut in The Crush, her best-known role to this day is Cher. Her director, Amy Heckerling, compared her to Marilyn Monroe in terms of appeal. Although her intentions can sometimes backfire, Cher shows true growth over the course of the film and helps the people around her in the process. To tell you the truth, I have not seen such good doing since your mother. Really? Really. Now get back to work. In an interview for the film's 25th anniversary with Vogue, Silverstone talked about the effort she made to reveal Cher's heart beyond her materialism. Her performance shows it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Number 14. The Rock before he was movie star Dwayne Johnson, he was the renowned professional wrestler The Rock. Even before he was acting in films, his presence in the ring during the 90s was so palpable that he was already a star in the eyes of millions of wrestling fans. Debuting in the WWF, now the WWE, as Rocky Maivia in 1996, he turned heel and adopted The Rock name and persona, leading to feuds with the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin and Triple H. But this was one bad guy audiences could root for. His charisma and catchphrases turned him into a sensation. If you smell, what the rock? Incredible as both an athlete and an entertainer, Dwayne The Rock Johnson truly, well, rocks. Number 13, Janet Jackson. Turn on the radio today and you can hear Janet Jackson. You might not always hear her songs necessarily, but you can definitely hear her influence on modern artists like Lady Gaga, Beyonce, and Ariana Grande. Either way, albums like Janet and The Velvet Rope sound as fresh now as they did almost 30 years ago. She wasn't content to simply be known as Michael Jackson's younger sister, so Janet consistently pushed herself as an artist, and even dabbled in acting, lending herself a starring role in John Singleton's Poetic Justice. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't have to shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. Trying to measure Janet Jackson's impact on the entertainment industry is like trying to measure the impact of the sun on the earth. It's simply too great to do. Number 12. The Beastie Boys The Beastie Boys came together in the early 80s, a time when hip-hop certainly wasn't as fully mainstream. As the genre further exploded in popularity throughout the 90s, the New York trio became anything but a footnote, releasing multiple number one albums. 
The coolest thing about the group wasn't even their prodigious skills on the mic, mixing board, or musical instruments. It was how they were always willing to learn, whether that meant incorporating new styles into their sound or making amends for previous offensive lyrical content. It's not so much that we grew up, it's more like we wised up. Now we can say that our reflection on the mistakes we made came from Yauk and the ideas that he brought back to us, but that's partly true. I mean, we were ready for change. We encouraged each other to do and say what we wanted to do. The death of Adam MCA Yauk in 2012 brought about the end of the group, but they will always be true hip hop legends. Number 11, Will Smith. No one forgets when they first set eyes on Will Smith. We were all amazed by just how much effortless charm he exhibited. Seriously, does this guy drink a magical charisma smoothie for breakfast? After establishing himself as a musical talent with DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, the path to superstardom was further paved by his hit sitcom, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Honey, the last time we saw you, you were this funny little boy. Now look at you. Oh my goodness, you are a man. Uh, that was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. You certainly have grown, Will. Well, we all have. <laughs> went on to star in movies like Six Degrees of Separation and Bad Boys, but it was the film Independence Day that saw him both fighting off some unfriendly extraterrestrials and earning himself a permanent spot on the celebrity A-list. Ah! Even as his star power grew, Smith remained relatable, and his movie's billion-dollar earnings speak for themselves. Number 10, Madonna. What do you call someone who tops the Billboard, Box Office, and New York Times bestseller charts all in the same decade? You call her Madonna. The pop icon furthered her cultural dominance in the 90s by releasing number one singles like Vogue and Take a Bow, and appearing in films like A League of Their Own and Evita, the latter of which earned her a Golden Globe. Don't cry for me, Argentina. While not all of her ventures were well-received, such as her leaning into a more provocative image with the release of her book titled Sex and her more explicit stage shows, she always kept our attention. And she ended the decade with one of her very best albums, The Adventurous Ray of Light. Number 9. The Notorious B.I.G. Whether you know him as Christopher Wallace, Notorious B.I.G., Biggie Smalls, or just Biggie, there is no question that he is one of the greatest minds that hip-hop has ever known. Brooklyn born and bred, Biggie rose to fame with his album Ready to Die, and songs like Juicy helped turbocharge New York's image as a hip-hop powerhouse. And if you don't know, now you know. He even collaborated with Michael Jackson. Multiple publications have named Biggie as the greatest rapper of all time, and in 2020, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. To this day, the Notorious B.I.G. ranks among the top of nearly every best rapper list and has influenced an entire generation of artists from Jay-Z, Eminem, Nicki Minaj, Alicia Keys, and Usher. Tragically, his life was cut short in 1997 after being killed in a drive-by shooting. Although he's no longer with us, Wallace's legacy lives on through his massive influence. Number 8. Tony Hawk If you can name one skateboarder, it's probably Tony Hawk. Although he was already an accomplished skateboarder as a teenager in the 80s, the 90s were when Hawk's fame truly began to soar. His early skating abilities and style in the ramp skating has set trends and used tricks that were before considered the impossible. Tony is constantly pushing himself to take skating beyond the current limit, and if anyone is capable of reaching that next level, Tony is. Competing in the X Games, performing patented tricks like the 900, and launching his own line of video games made Hawk a hero for every kid at the skate park hoping to achieve their own dreams of vert skateboarding stardom. In an interview with The New Yorker, Hawk said that he never imagined any future for himself besides skateboarding. If you've seen what he can do with a skateboard, you'll know he means that. Gymnastics has its Nadia. But skateboarding has Hawk. Number seven, Jennifer Aniston. Did you call the cops? Nope. We took her to lunch. Ah, your own brand of vigilante justice. <laughs> Even in an ensemble as talented and revered as the Friends cast, Jennifer Aniston stood out. Our 90s selves still want to go shopping with Rachel Green. Aniston not only did an amazing job of making Rachel likable, she also managed to make her someone other struggling 20-somethings could relate to. 
many aspired to look like her too, with the Rachel haircut becoming a popular 90s do. Vanessa, what are you doing? <laughs> what? Oh, what? <laughs> Can you just, can you just drop that for a second? I, yeah. <laughs> she also inspired fashion trends, such as plaid skirts and overalls. Aniston, of course, had great chemistry with her fellow cast members, most prominently with David Schwimmer as her on-again, off-again partner Ross. She also starred in numerous 90s movies and later continued a strong career in both TV and film. Number six, Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> There is no doubt that Stone Cold Steve Austin is the most popular WWF superstar of all time. The Rock was definitely one of the coolest wrestlers of the 90s, but at the risk of being called jabronis, we have to give the number one spot in that category to his rival, Stone Cold Steve Austin. A central attraction of the WWF's Attitude Era, Austin contributed to a major spike in pro wrestling's popularity. He thrilled fans with wrestling feuds, including those with Bret Hart and Chairman Vince McMahon. Plus, we can't forget about the stunts Austin pulled, like driving a Zamboni up to the ring and tackling his boss. He also popularized an amazing finishing move better known as the Stone Cold Stunner. If there's anyone who knows how to stun, it is Steve Austin. Number 5. Denzel Washington Denzel Washington won his first Oscar in 1989 for Glory, but took his talent to an even greater level in the 90s. The movie and theater star had one of the best runs of any actor of the decade. You'll remember him excelling in biopics like Malcolm X and the Hurricane, and thrillers like The Pelican Brief and Devil in a Blue Dress. Yeah, well, you better be telling the truth, Jimmy. Part of Washington's success as an actor comes from his commitment to his roles. As his Malcolm X co-star Angela Bassett told the New York Times, quote, when Denzel has to go to work, he goes to work. He's the one that brought me to the Honorable yes. Elijah Muhammad. And the Honorable time, Elijah though. Muhammad brought me back A from the... Long time no, 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 you you your, don't you raise your voice in my house! Whether on stage or on the screen, you can always count on Washington to deliver. Number 4. Naomi Campbell In the 90s, Naomi Campbell put the super in supermodel. The British fashion icon was a star of runways, magazines, music videos, and more. As a member of the big six of supermodels, including Kate Moss, Campbell broke barriers for models of color and ruled fashion shows with her striking looks and poses. It was an image that worked. For the last 15 years, Campbell has embodied the essence of the supermodel. She was the first black model to appear on the cover of French Vogue and the first black model to grace the cover of the September issue of American Vogue. Her ambition spread to other ventures, including making music, appearing in movies, publishing books, and releasing her own line of fragrances. Famously outspoken about issues like racism in the fashion industry, Campbell changed modeling as we know it for good. And um, at first I think it was a trend, and now I think in terms of like cosmetic contracts and stuff like that, they're trying to market yeah. ethnic women which has taken a long time to happen because usually it's a, you can have like 10 um, cosmetic contracts, but not one of them are for ethnic women. That's number three, Tupac Shakur. The end of Kendrick Lamar's album to Pimp a Butterfly features an imagined conversation between him and Tupac Shakur. The message is clear. Lamar hopes to be as great as one of his idols, the man most synonymous with West Coast hip hop. Shakur positively shook up the industry with his music, which ranged from boastful to conscious, and was a key participant in the harsh feud between the West and East Coast hip-hop scenes. But you didn't need to get swept up in any drama to hear the talent on display. He was also an acclaimed and influential actor, appearing in films like Poetic Justice and Above the Rim. Shakur was tragically killed in 1996, but he will always be known as a legend. Number 2. Michael Jordan In the 90s, 23 became something more than a number. In fact, just about anything associated with Michael Jordan automatically became cooler, including basketball itself. As a member of the six-time championship-winning Chicago Bulls and the 1992 Olympics Dream Team, Jordan embodied the word dedication. 
If you've seen The Last Dance, you'll know what we mean when we fawn over just how much of an icon Jordan was, not only as an athlete, but also as a personality. That's how I played the game. That was my mentality. If you don't want to play that way, don't play that way. Break. Oh, and let's not forget he also gave us the iconic Space Jam movie. His influence was indisputable. Let's see if I remember how to do this. To this day, kids are still out on the court aspiring to make slam dunks in their own Air Jordans. Number 1. Kurt Cobain Coolness is earned by resisting conformity and standing proudly in your own power. When Kurt Cobain and his bandmates in Nirvana rocketed to fame in the early 90s, they defied the notion that mainstream rock music had to be devoid of meaning or feeling. I think it's embarrassing to have so many expectations. A totally superficial label to put on a band to state that they're the next big thing, because you know, that's not our goal in the first place. People are putting that tag on us without us really wanting to do that. Nirvana's intense sound helped millions of music fans feel as though they were finally being heard. Songs such as Smells Like Teen Spirit and Heart Shaped Box are as catchy as they are cathartic. Cobain died in 1994, only a year after the release of the band's final album, In Utero. But his and Nirvana's lasting cultural impact makes them the coolest of the 90s. I don't think anybody's ever going to be able to take that place. I know nobody's ever going to be able to take that place. Somebody like Kurt Cobain doesn't happen every day, and that's why he was so great. It's always fun to look back and see just how much things have changed. And trust me when I tell you, things have changed. In fact, some things just don't exist anymore. In the 1990s, well, they've had their fair share of technologies and products and the such go to the wayside. So let's take a look at those 90s things that have gone bye-bye. Well, it's the end of an era. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things from the 90s that don't exist anymore. It began with a nut and a bolt. For this list, we're looking at food, technology, fashion, and more that defined our lives between 1990 and 1999. Which piece of 90s culture do you miss the most? What are you glad is gone? Number 10, Y2K Panic. Doug, everyone here is waiting for the same thing, the stroke of midnight. Survivalists stockpiled food and everyone waited to see what would shut down when the clock struck midnight in the new millennium. We all know that the human race and planet Earth are not going to be around forever. But with the new millennium on the horizon, many believed the year 2000 was going to initiate the collapse of society. Now, the federal government is comparing Y2K to a huge natural disaster, like an earthquake, a hurricane, or a tornado disrupts people's lives for days, weeks, or maybe even months. In the 90s, several computer experts warned that because many computer systems represented years using only the last two digits, computers would mix up 1900 and 2000. This led some folks to buy up food and supplies to tide them through an imminent apocalypse. But as it turned out, the world stepped into the new millennium with minimal issues. It hit midnight and nothing happened. It was like crickets in the newsroom. Nothing happened, Never. except beans and rice happened. While we have dealt with a few other end-of-the-world fears afterwards, like 2012, none quite reached the same level of paranoia. The end of the world is coming. Now come on, get in your radiation suits. Peter, we are not missing a once-in-a-lifetime event because of some wacko doomsday theory. Okay, okay. Number 9. The Windows 95 Maze Screensavers aren't all that common anymore now that most of our devices have a sleep function to conserve power. In the 90s, however, there was one screensaver you'd see in many homes. The Windows 95 Maze. Here, you're basically watching your computer play a video game as it automatically takes left turns until finding the smiley face, thus resetting and generating a whole new maze. There was something really mesmerizing about it between the artificial intelligence and guessing where the face might end up. Honestly, why hasn't Microsoft made a full-fledged game out of this? Number 8. The Delia's Catalog 
If you weren't sure what to wear for the girls' night or the high school dance, you probably referred to this mail-in catalog of fashion. Founded in 1993, Delia's was the go-to catalog for teens who wanted to wear the latest clothes and fashion trends. Unfortunately, Delia's would be buried by competitors, in addition to being spun off and acquired on a few occasions, as time went on. By the end of 2014, Delia's filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and liquidated all of its stores. I declare bankruptcy! While it tried to bounce back as an online-only store in 2015, this venture was a complete failure. Now, you can only get their clothing through the Dolls Kill brand. Number 7. Orbitz. Yes, it's the magical beady beverage that has featured on many a WatchMojo list in recent years. Is it a bug? Did someone mistake your beer for an empty and put their cigarette butt in there? With Orbitz, there was no mistake, apart from it generally being a bad idea. This obscure, non-carbonated drink was manufactured with a small variety of flavors to quench your thirst and hunger. From raspberry citrus to vanilla orange, the beads and beverage made for a unique type of drink. Alas, Orbitz would live a seriously short life because of its terrible commercial performance. Given the presence of gel and gum and high sugar, one can hazard a guess at why folks weren't picking these up off the shelves, especially when seeing the edible orbs inside. <coughs> well, yes. What did you think this is all about? Number 6. The iMac G3 You gotta see this thing in person, but I'll do the best I can with video. This is iMac. The whole thing is translucent. You can see into it. It's so cool. Apple's Mac computers have come a long way. Today, design is all about improving battery life, making everything as thin as possible, and getting berated about updating iTunes even if we don't use it. But in the late 90s, a common Mac computer looked about as chunky as a CRT television set. The faster, sleeker, quieter, redesigned, and even easier to use iMac. Presenting our newest internet cruise line. Bon voyage. The teal-colored Macs with their translucent Bondi blue shells were especially a huge success for Apple. But looking back, these desktop computers were also incredibly hefty and awkwardly shaped. That's because it wasn't just a monitor. This was the computer itself. Heated leather seats sold separately. Just seeing pictures of these makes us glad schools are using laptops instead. Number 5. PB Crisps Yeah, we gotta squeeze another food product in here, and this is another snack that's popped up on our lists before. PB Crisps was a special kind of sweet treat from planters, consisting of peanut-shaped cookies filled with peanut butter inside. Inside the center so sweet, peanut butter cream, oh a treat! A taste so enormously grand, made to fit in the palm of your hand. And if you wanted an addition to peanut butter, you could buy bags of the cookies that were also filled with chocolate or strawberry. Sadly, these snacks were not around for long due to low demand, and have become a relic of the mid-90s. To this day, there is still a group of dedicated fans clamoring for the product's return, even going as far as to make a website dedicated to the cause. Number 4. AIM, also known as AOL Instant Messenger. Just fire up that machine and off you go. You got mail! <laughs> Bling! An instant message pops up. It's having a verbal chat electronically. It's been a hot minute since we heard anything remotely relevant to AOL. While AOL currently exists and was acquired by Verizon in 2015, AIM ceased operations in December 2017. AOL's announcement said simply, Goodbye. <laughs> We're shocked too. This service was introduced way back in 1997 and became the leading messaging service in North America for roughly a decade. Wherever I go, I stay connected with everyone in my life. It's really easy to stay in touch. But as tech giants like Google and Facebook started taking over, AIM lost all purpose. I remain confused, empty. What am I evolving into? What is my purpose? I must know. Tell me. There's no way to tell. The two companies had better services and better security. Slowly but surely, AIM would begin shutting down features one by one, starting in 2007, before disappearing completely a decade later. Having failed to keep up with ever-evolving technology, we're forced to say TTFN to the iconic service and a simpler time. We can only hope will BRB. TTYL. <laughs> Number 3. Netscape Navigator She was 18 years old. She doesn't even know what Netscape is. 
These days, we have dozens of web browsers vying for our attention, from Google Chrome to Mozilla Firefox to Safari to DuckDuckGo. We remember way back when the internet was a baby that there was only one browser to use, Netscape Navigator. This browser was created in 1994 and, for a short time, went uncontested in the industry. Well, what about all those other low-cost guys, like... Don't you want an ISP that's fast, safer, reliable, and more secure? What happened to cause such decline? Well, Internet Explorer happened. Then Chrome, Firefox, Safari, all of them. Netscape would receive its final update in 2007 before ceasing support and development the year after. Everything has to change faster, obviously. You know, look at Netscape. It was born and died. I don't want to use the word died, they wouldn't like that word, but it basically was born and overtaken within uh, four years. That's pretty fast, I think, because <laughs> they must think it's very fast. Number two, the Discman. Like Walkmans in the 80s, Discmans became a crucial part of our lives. There just wasn't anything like going on a walk or exercising while jamming out to the newest albums. Besides radios, this was pretty much the way to listen to music. Of course, as we find new ways to store data, we also kill off part of a medium. Nowadays, we can just open Spotify on our phones and jam to anything we desire without having to eject a CD and holster something chunky on our waist. Still, there is something tactile to be missed here. Your ears will tell you, it's not only what you play, it's what you play it on. Number one, video rental stores. Oh! <laughs> Dork. <laughs> Jesus, this place is back tonight, man. We had a run in the mass murder section. Those who grew up in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s fondly look back on video rental stores. While the very first such stores opened in the late 70s, it was in the 90s that bigger brands like Hollywood Video and Blockbuster boomed in demand. For some families, weekly trips to these stores would become a tradition, as new movies made their way to the shelves and movie buffs sought out hidden gems. Wow! Wow! wow what a difference! This industry would decline, however, as Netflix and streaming services became more and more prominent. Hollywood Video would go defunct in 2010, while Blockbuster enjoys a few thousand customers through its last and only store, located in Bend, Oregon. When you like see them all like next to each other, it's kind of makes it easier. But with like on Netflix, you only see the, the title, and that's all. But you have to like scroll through it, and it takes a while to get through all of the movies. Hey 90s kids, we didn't forget about you because clearly there are more than a few toys from the decade that don't exist anymore either. But as we're about to find out, for many of them, yeah, it was for a good reason. So uh, tell me, do you recognize any of these 90s toys? I'd like a hotel room please, with an extra large bed, a TV, and one of those little refrigerators you have to open with a key. Credit card? You got it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 90s toys that don't exist anymore. Hold the magic key and watch them dance and light up the sky. She looks like a dancing star. Dance fly just for me. For this list, we're looking at toys that gained popularity during the 1990s, only to be discontinued. What toy from the 90s brings you the most nostalgia? Number 10, Tickle Me Elmo. While there are new Elmo dolls being produced on a yearly basis, none of them will ever stack up to the hysteria surrounding the Tickle Me Elmo craze of 1996. When your child tickles him, he talks, <laughs> laughs, and his whole body shakes. Oh, tickle Me Elmo and his Tickle Me friends from the Tyco Sesame Street family. The ticklish and talking doll was the most in-demand toy during that year's holiday season. So much so that it caused a feeding frenzy among desperate parents. 48 of the bug-eyed beasts were put on sale at a local Walmart, and one of the clerks was sent to hospital after being trampled in the frenzy. This excessive example of supply and demand is nothing new, of course, but the level at which consumers were determined to acquire a Tickle Me Elmo doll was unprecedented. Today, re-releases and repackaged Elmos can surely be found. But it's safe to say that the hype for the OG version of this doll is behind us. Number 9. Talking Baby Alive The origins of Kenner's Baby Alive dolls date all the way back to the early 1970s. You can pretend Baby Alive eats and drinks when you move the lever and back. 
Big girl, bottles all gone. Oh, my baby needs a clean diaper. It's fun to baby your baby in life. Sweet darling baby in life. However, there was one upgrade released during the 90s that barely got out of the starting gate before being recalled. This, of course, was the talking Baby Alive doll. Yeah, that's good. I'm so hungry, Mommy. Talking Baby Alive, tell me you need me so. I have to go. Unearthed in 1992, it featured all of the excitement that comes with feeding a toddler and having it go potty. He's shit everywhere. There's shit everywhere! Damn it! There's shit on the windows! Okay, so exciting might not be the best word to use. Unfortunately, the doll had parents and children slightly disturbed by its deep adult-like voice. My baby's talking! I love you, mommy. It also featured quite the noisy operation, which ultimately led Kenner to give it the boot. Number 8. Nano Baby we're willing to bet that you've heard of Tamagotchi and Gigapets. But isn't Tamagotchi her new favorite pet? Yes! So what's that make me, fish sticks? Oh, are you hungry? Oh, no, 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 by all means, feed it. Play till your heart's content. But what about nano babies? The idea was certainly similar. A small, egg-sized virtual toy that needed some real care and attention in order to keep it alive. Keep it happy, keep it clean. Keep it happy, it's a sea, it's a sea. <laughs> The average nano baby needed to be fed, changed, loved, and cared for until it turned into a toddler. Then it would, for reasons of which we're not quite sure, sprout wings and fly away. And this little piggy went, oh, look, Marge, Maggie lost her baby legs. Oh my God. Needless to say, the popularity of the nano baby wasn't quite on par with its more famous cousins, causing it to quickly fall by the wayside. Number 7. Skip It While variations of the Skip It do still exist, they're not exactly how you remember them from back in the day. The OG Skip It was actually first developed back in the late 80s, but the Skip It Renaissance, as it was called, didn't occur until its relaunch in the 90s. Electronic Skip It Skip It, skip it to the sound Faster, faster, coming round Skip It, skip it more and more Faster, faster, beat your score Here, a counter was added to help kids keep track of their skips as they leapt over a ball that was attached to their ankle. It proved extremely popular, to the point where Hasbro kept the line going after they absorbed Tiger Electronics. Skip it, skip it, sounds like fun. Faster, faster, everyone. Faster, faster, if you dare, skip it, skip it everywhere. However, the Skip It adjacent products that exist today have received multiple facelifts since their old school heyday. Number 6. Dream Phone 90s nostalgia is a big deal to many people, and Dream Phone is definitely a throwback to a more innocent time. Who, who, who's got a crush on you? Hello, hugs! If this was a board game where the object was to find out the identity of your secret admirer, the game's telephone offered recorded clues, and players had to figure out who likes them before anyone else. I don't see anybody without pants. Is this Trevor? Close. I'm Trevor's dad. Rich. <laughs> It was so popular that it actually made a brief comeback and was available on Amazon in 2019. However, a search of the site at the time of this recording came up empty, leaving us disappointed that we'll never know who our secret admirer is. It's Dan! Dan, my man! You're right. I really like you. Yes! <laughs> Dream Phone, the hot electronic talking phone game. It's for you! Number 5. Talk Boy and Talk Girl it isn't often that a movie prop gets licensed for a crossover toy line, but that's exactly what happened when Tiger Electronics developed the Talkboy for use in the movie Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Now you can be as clever as Kevin with Tiger's new Talkboy tape recorder. Hey, stop drooling on me! Hey, stop drooling on me! You may remember Kevin McAllister using the Talkboy device to alter the sound of his voice at various points during the film. But surprisingly, the initial retail version didn't include this feature. Like a hotel room, please, yes. with an extra large bed, a TV, and one of those little refrigerators you have to open with a key. Yes, sir, you'll need a major credit card upon checking. Credit card? You got it. Thankfully, Tiger Electronics quickly got with the program and made the addition. This led to the Talkboy being one of the hottest toys of the 1993 holiday shopping season. Hi, kids. We're home early. Hi, kids. We're home early. 
Tiger's new Talkboy tape recorder comes with audio cassette. There was even a pink version dubbed the Talk Girl that debuted in 1995. The design would continue to get upgraded until the patent was finally abandoned in 1999. Number 4. Sky Dancers You'd be forgiven for not remembering that these cute little toys actually had a tie-in cartoon show that ran for one season back in 1996. The Sky Dancers were winged dolls that flew in the air after they were placed into a pedestal and a long pull string was tugged. Wow, they really fly! The effect was fairly impressive for the time, although some parents complained that the wings would occasionally fly off with intense force. This reportedly resulted in over a hundred injuries and even temporary blindness in some kids. Ah! My God! My God! Needless to say, this prompted toy maker Galoob to recall the Sky Dancers from retail. You put that thing away. Now put it down before you poke somebody's eye out. Number three. Dear Diary You read my diary? That is not okay. A diary is like a person's most private place. I, you don't even know what I was writing about. If it seems like we've spotlighted a lot of Tiger Electronics toys, it's because we have. And we're not stopping just yet. Dear Diary was an electronic planner slash diary slash time waster. Admittedly, it was ahead of its time, serving as a sort of proto-palm pilot for the preteen gang. Kids could see their horoscopes, create lists, do simple math, and yes, keep diary entries on this small portable device. If she wasn't born with boys on the brain, she'd keep her shopping lists, bank accounts, even her homework assignments. Of course, she did figure out her horoscope. Dear Diary was also password protected, which almost certainly helped in households with multiple children. Only my secret code unlocks it. We absolutely salute this toy's forward-thinking contributions to secret keeping everywhere. Number 2. Snack Time Cabbage Patch Dolls the history of the Cabbage Patch dolls dates all the way back to the late 70s. However, the controversy behind our penultimate pick lands us straight in the mid-90s, a bit after Cabbage Patch hysteria. During this time, the dolls were being expanded upon with fresh new ideas. This was all in the attempt to remain competitive. The Snack Time Cabbage Patch doll tried to achieve this via a mechanism that enabled the doll to consume fake plastic food. However, many children were apparently getting their hair and fingers caught in the doll's metal rollers. The face was so tight against the top of her head, pushed down like this, there was no way I could cut the hair. We're pretty sure the kids weren't meant to be the snack. I heard she has tentacles and eats children for lunch! Number 1. Steve Urkel Doll Is there any doll line that screams I love the 90s more than a Steve Urkel doll? Well, perhaps one of those Spice Girls dolls, but we digress. We hope that actor Jaleel White got a kick out of being immortalized in doll form because this Urkel doll is admittedly kind of cute. It also does all the things you would expect an Urkel doll to do, including spouting off catchphrases like, Did I do that? And got any cheese? He's got my looks, my laugh, my voice, and all! Can I do that? Needless to say, you're not going to find these dolls on the shelves of any toy store these days. Perhaps your local thrift or antique shop might have a little Steve Urkel waiting for you, though. Urkel dance, all you have to do is hitch up your pants, bend your knees and stick out your pelvis. I'm telling you, baby, it's better than Elvis. Okay, we're going to stick with 90s kids just a little bit longer because this next list might just give them nightmares. Sorry, not sorry. That's right, it's the top 10 things that 90s kids were afraid of. Yeah, I, I actually wonder if a specific creepy... TV theme song made the list? You know the one I'm talking about? Let's find out if X marks the spot right now. Viewers beware, you're in for a scare. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things 90s kids were afraid of. It's all in my imagination. Oh no, it's happening. I gotta get out of here! For this list, we'll be looking at the most awful things to spook kids growing up in the 1990s, both real and fictional. What scared you as a 90s kid?
Number 10, hearing do you like scary movies over the phone. Long before smartphones, we had to rely on landlines to get in touch with others, and caller ID was not a guarantee. Who is this? You tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> This meant that a mysterious phone call was the perfect way to scare your friends, especially the horror fans among them. In the now iconic opening scene from Scream, Drew Barrymore's Casey Becker is home alone and receives a call from a stranger who's seen one scary movie too many. Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Oh, just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh huh. No matter how many times we watch this scene, there's something about it that always sends shivers down our spines. You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish, understand? According to Barrymore, the use of caller ID tripled in the US after Scream's release. So if your heart skipped a beat the next time your phone rang, well, you weren't the only one. <laughs> Number nine, I see dead people. I see as soon as Haley Joel Osment said those four words, The Sixth Sense cemented itself as a modern classic of supernatural horror. Did people like in graves and coffins? Walking around like regular people. It also had 90s kids seriously creeped out, looking at their friends twice to make sure they weren't actually ghosts. Even if the film's famous resolution has been spoiled for you, you should still see The Sixth Sense, especially if you love complex takes on horror. Do you know why you're afraid when you're alone? I do. I do. M. Night Shyamalan's directing creates an atmosphere that's tense but also quite humane, and Osmond, Bruce Willis, and Tony Collette all turn in career-high performances. But consider watching this one with the lights on. Mama? No. Dinner is not ready. Number eight, this is your brain on drugs commercial. PSAs used to rule the airwaves, and one practically every 90s kid remembers is This Nightmare Fuel, starring Rachel Lee Cook. There was another version of the commercial that premiered in 1987. This is your brain on drugs. But this is the one all 90s kids know. In the ad, Cook uses an egg as a metaphor for the viewer's brain. This is your brain, and this is heroin. Then, to establish the effects of illicit drug use, she smashes the egg with a frying pan and creates even further wreckage in the kitchen. It's not over yet. This is what your family goes through! Your friends The commercial has been parodied many times, including by Rachel Lee Cook herself in an episode of Robot Chicken. This is what happens to the profits from your grandma's bake sale? This is what happens to the world economy? We weren't asking our parents for eggs at breakfast for a while after it started airing. Any questions? Number seven, The Witches. Roald Dahl fans are doubly blessed. Not only do they get to read some of the weirdest and most exciting stories ever written, but they get great film versions too. Hello, little boy. Come on in then. The Witches might not have the same name recognition as Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or Matilda, but if you like your family entertainment suitably twisted, give this a watch. <coughs> The film about a young boy and his grandmother trying to stop some nefarious witches more than holds up by today's standards. <laughs> Directed by Nicholas Rogue and starring a wonderfully evil Angelica Houston as the Grand High Witch, the film perfectly captures the sinister fun of the original novel. It also contains some spectacular and shocking visual effects, courtesy of Jim Henson, who sadly passed away just before its release. Number six, chat room creeps. Nowadays, the idea of meeting someone in person who you originally met online isn't a big deal. I've been talking to this kid in the Hyper Games chat room. He is so dope. What's the kid's online name? But back in the 90s, anonymity reigned supreme on the internet, and you didn't always know who you were talking to on AOL Instant Messenger or other chat platforms. But he says if we want to come over, we can test it. That mystery could be exciting, but it was also very dangerous, and parents and kids had a whole new type of stranger danger to worry about. Here's the really cool part. I used that video camera to put your image in the game. Wow, 
Can we do it? While talking with strangers on the internet has become a lot more normalized in the decades since, it's still good to remember to never give out your personal information to or meet someone you don't entirely trust. Wow, look at all these guys that want to be my friend! Number 5. Your Tamagotchi Dying It's not quite as sad as your real-life pet passing away, but if you had a Tamagotchi in the 90s, you did everything you could to keep that little virtual pet alive. Oh, no, 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 by all means, feed it. Play to your heart's content. Look, Goldie! I took good care of her. This wasn't something you could just pick up and attend to when you felt like it. If you forgot to pause, you might have been sound asleep only to be broken right out of your peaceful slumber by your digital companion needing to be fed. When I feed mine, I tap the touch screen and keep the bad, bad away. Well… You had to take care of your little pal right. Otherwise, it would meet an early demise. The heartbreak of losing a Tamagotchi was felt by countless 90s kids, and it always filled us with regret about what we could have done differently. Cruel world, he was so young. I'm so sorry, I was up all night, all my money got stolen, and I haven't had a clock since my Tamagotchi died. Number 4. The X-Files Theme Song Agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully encountered plenty of paranormal terrors on the X-Files. But for our money, no alien creature was quite as creepy as the show's theme song. The opening credits visuals are spooky enough, but when paired with that eerie music, it enters a whole new dimension of frightening. Scary or not, it definitely made a cultural impact. It's so sinister and spooky <laughs> that it can basically make anything sinister. The Mark Snow composed song was so popular, it ranked second on the UK singles chart for three weeks in 1996. After being turned into an internet meme, it is admittedly less chilling, but that's only because we poked fun at it. Skinny cappuccino for Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Just trust us on this one. You'd have been scared too if your first time was hearing it in 1993. Number 3. Y2K Some people spent New Year's Eve like how Prince told us to, but others were a lot more on edge. Hey Homer, weren't you the plant's Y2K compliance officer? Absolutely. Must have been hard debugging all those computers, eh, Homer? Doing what now? Fear about the Y2K bug, a supposed computer error that would cause blackouts and worse, was prevalent towards the end of the 90s. The end of the world is coming. Now come on, get in your radiation suits. And it was hard not to get swept up in the anxiety at least a little bit. Computer developers worked diligently to make sure devices were Y2K ready. Roughly $300 billion was spent on preparing for Y2K, which is over 450 billion today. So they check for this now. Mm. No, no, here's the thing. Intex so backed up with all the software we're updating for the year 2000, they'd never notice. The precautions were a good idea, but in the end, everything worked out without a hitch. We were able to keep our lights on, enjoy our continued use of technology, and look forward to something truly scary. 2000s fashion trends. Number 2. Are you afraid of the dark? Before American Horror Story or Black Mirror, the scariest show for 90s kids aired on Nickelodeon. <laughs> what do you think I am, some kind of clown? Are You Afraid of the Dark was an anthology series where scary stories were told by the show's young Midnight Society and played out on screen. I call this story The Tale of Old Man Corcoran. Lots of these stories were rooted in urban legends and other sorts of lore, but they were likely the first place many 90s kids had heard them. We were playing hide and seek. In the graveyard. Just the two of you. And while things stayed family friendly, the show did a great job of introducing 90s kids to horror. Now, who's ready to hear the tale of the dead man's float? Number 1. Goosebumps Next to the Harry Potter series, the all-time highest-selling book series is Goosebumps. R.L. Stein's horror books have been published in more than 30 languages and have sold over 400 million copies around the globe. Those who grew up in the 90s know just how wonderfully spooky these stories are. Open, let her go! Let me go! 
if you didn't spend at least part of your childhood reading Night of the Living Dummy or The Haunted Mask underneath the covers, with a flashlight, past your bedtime, were you even really a 90s kid? <laughs> My mask, it won't come off. Stop kidding around, Carly Beth. I I'm not kidding around. And we can't forget the television adaptation, which brought these spine-tingling stories to life in vivid detail. No matter how much new horror we encounter, nothing will give us goosebumps quite the same way. Oh no! Yeah. What are we gonna do? Yeah. What are you gonna do, do for a guy? Alright, let's face it. Many advertisements live rent-free in our brains all the time. And I guarantee you that many of them are from the 90s. Yeah, well, don't just take my word for it. Check out these awesome 90s commercials. Mentos, the fresh maker. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 iconic 90s commercials. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. For this list, we're looking at memorable individual commercials or recurring campaigns from the 1990s that pack a ton of nostalgia. Do you have a favorite 90s commercial? Number 10, Budweiser Frogs. Budweiser. The 1990s were a prime time for advertising when it came to Budweiser beer. The decade saw several very creative ad campaigns that have stuck with us for years. For this particular commercial, three frogs sit outside a bar with a bright Budweiser sign on top. As opposed to their typical ribbit, each frog opts to vocalize one syllable of the word shown on the sign. Budweiser. At first, you have no idea what they're saying, but as the camera pans up, the three frogs speak in the right order, revealing what they're trying to say. Creative and funny, it's a memorable way to sell a cold one. Number 9. Double Mint Twins – Double Mint Gum double your pleasure, double your For a long time in print and on TV, Wrigley's advertised their Double Mint Gum, showcasing sets of twins. This reached a peak in the 1990s, yielding a plethora of commercials featuring sets of twins. What better way to advertise a gum called Double Mint than to see twins enjoying the flavor of one of Wrigley's signature chewers, right? One ad even featured Tia and Tamira Mori, who later became famous for their roles in the TV sitcom Sister Sister. Dad? Mom? <laughs> that girl has my face! For those who lived through the era, Double Mint immediately brings to mind thoughts of identical twins. Number 8. Mortal Monday – Mortal Kombat Double Dragon and Street Fighter may have started it, but Mortal Kombat certainly finished it. When this game hit arcades in 1992, kids were lined up to get a chance to try and execute their own fatality against their opponents. Given the game's popularity, a console release was inevitable. The Mortal Monday ad campaign saw a teenager yelling out the game's famous title line interspersed with gameplay. The commercial was very memorable for incorporating the game's own quips and the rush of the crowds eager to garner a copy. Oh no! Get over here! It also heralded the release of a single game on multiple different platforms. Flawless victory indeed. Number 7. The Bagel Bites Jingle – Bagel Bites Pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time. A surefire way to know whether or not an ad works is if the jingle sticks in your head. Commercials have been using jingles forever, and although we may not want to admit it, we all have at least one or 1,000 jingles we can remember. Advertisements for Bagel Bites, a palm-sized pizza snack, permanently infused the catchy pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time into the minds of countless kids and their parents. You'd hear the song on the TV and suddenly have a craving for pizzas you hoped your mom or dad had in the freezer. Even the legendary Meatloaf did his own memorable version of this TV jingle. Pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, oh, pizza at supper time. Yeah. Number 6. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. G'day. I eat a little bit now.
I'll come back for the rest later. The most fascinating aspects of advertising are the endlessly creative ways in which companies pitch their wares to us consumers. A straight up buy our stuff just doesn't work, right? Well, Reese's took a clever approach with their There's No Wrong Way campaign in the late 1980s and 90s. A whole series of commercials showed us a plethora of ways in which the peanut butter cups could be eaten. Whether it's with milk or when jumping out of water like a dolphin, there never seemed to be enough different ways to eat this tasty treat. Okay, now we need to go to the store and pick up some candy. There's no wrong way Good. to eat a Reese's. Number five, Miss Cleo. What will you ask me? Does the name Yuri Del Harris ring a bell for anyone? Well, you probably knew her better as a TV infomercial psychic known as Miss Cleo. Back in the 1990s, her advertisements for paid psychic services were all over the airwaves. Are you a skeptic? Well, why not convince yourself for free? It's time to try your free reading right now. The ads would showcase her reading tarot cards to people who had called in an attempt to convince the viewers she was the real deal. As memorable and charismatic as she was, the entire thing proved to be a hoax. Eventually, the psychic readers network she worked for was sued in multiple states for deceptive advertising and other charges. You would have thought that a psychic would have known to stay clear of these people, right? Call me for your free reading now. Number four, the Taco Bell Chihuahua, Taco Bell. Ay ay ay. The late 1990s gave birth to another memorable line of ads from Taco Bell. Known mainly just as the Taco Bell Chihuahua, this mascot became the face of Taco Bell for years, combining the ever so cute charm of a tiny dog with catchphrases like "Por favor, drop the chalupa." Yo quiero Taco Bell. And these ads proved to be a massive success. Voice actor Carlos Alizraki combined several influences, including notable cartoon character Ren from Ren and Stimpy, to create the dog's voice. This is the good life. The campaign ended in July of 2000 after several Hispanic groups successfully lobbied the company to stop using stereotypical imagery for their advertising. Number three, think different. Apple. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. Troublemakers. They may be an iconic and incredibly influential company now, but Apple went through some tough times in the 1990s. A combination of bad product decisions and the overwhelming success of Wintel computers had the company struggling to find its place. We shall but in 1997, Steve Jobs returned, and the company began the Think Different ad campaign, which helped Apple start off on a road to recovery. The influential TV commercial went over so well, it even received an Emmy for Outstanding Commercial in 1998. Since then, Apple has been synonymous with producing products that have been different than the norm. Number 2. What's up? Budweiser. What's up? What's up? Back to the brew. You didn't really think we were going to leave this off the list, did you? Originally airing at the tail end of the 90s, this commercial quickly became a pop culture sensation. What's up? What's up? Countless television shows and movies spoofed or paid homage to the famous commercials, originally inspired by a short film by the campaign's creator, Charles Stone III. What's up? What's up? Even in the 2020s, new versions of What's Up have surfaced, including one with smart devices doing their own rendition of the classic saying, and even a redo of the original to remind people to check in on their friends during the COVID era. Quarantine and having a bud. True. True. So, are all these commercials hitting you in the face with nostalgia? Same. But before we name our most iconic commercial from the 1990s, let's look through some honorable mentions. One of which I think I've mentioned way too many times in videos because I was obsessed with it. Super Smash Bros. Nintendo. Not every Nintendo game is family friendly. Something's gone wrong in the happy-go-lucky world of Nintendo. Introducing Super Smash Brothers, where all your favorite characters go toe-to-toe -to -toe in one four-player star-studded slam fest, only on Nintendo 64. Mouth-morphing gushers, fruit gushers. We've never seen candy do this before. It's the Burstinist. It's the Blastinist. It's Gushers Fruit Snacks. 
Got Milk, California Milk Processor Board. Now that's a memorable catchphrase. Hello, for $10,000, oh, Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry, your time is up. Got Milk. Collect Call, Geico Direct. Bob, we had a baby, it's a boy. First name Bob, last name is We Had a Baby, It's a Boy. Another scorcher, Sears. It's getting hot in here. Yesterday you said you'd call Sears. I'll call today. You call now. I'll call now. Now's the time to save on Sears installed central air conditioning. Get 0% finance charge, no billing, and no payments until August with the Sears Charge Home Improvement Plan. Number one, Cindy Crawford Super Bowl ad, Pepsi. A red Lamborghini pulls up to a gas station, and a beautiful brunette woman steps out. A couple of young boys are staring over at her as she puts change into a vending machine to get herself a Pepsi. The boys are mesmerized as she takes a big drink, and then we hear them say, Is that a great new Pepsi can or what? Cindy Crawford was in her heyday when this 1992 commercial hit the air, and created a pop culture sensation on the biggest stage. It was even remade decades later. Hi, Cindy. Show them how it's done. Of all the iconic commercials from the 1990s, this one stands above the rest. Introducing a whole new way to look at Pepsi and Diet Pepsi. It's beautiful. All right, we're going to end things on a personal favorite of mine. We'll be looking at a place that I miss dearly. That's right, it was a 90s hotspot. And no, it's not some nightclub. We're talking about Blockbuster Video. And man, was I a video store regular. So let's find out just some of the things that I and everybody else loved about this sacred place known as Blockbuster Video. Blockbuster nostalgia hit America and the world. And the only place to get your fix was our little Blockbuster that could. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things we loved about Blockbuster Video. How many, uh, how many copies of Meet the Fockers do we have in stock, Shelly? Six. We still have six! Okay, good. That, sh that, should, that should be good. Shelly. For this list, we're looking at all our favorite aspects of the now-defunct home video rental giant. What do you miss about Blockbuster Video? Number 10, Knowledgeable Employees. Uh, checking out the staff picks, Miss Bennis. Oh, <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah, this Vincent guy, he is the best. He and I have the exact same taste in movies. Oh, Vincent is an art house goon. <laughs> I stick to the gene rack. As an employee at Blockbuster, you got free rentals and even had the chance to view new releases before they were put on the shelves. Sure, it was retail, but it was fun. There aren't many places that pay you to talk about movies all day. More often than not, employees were passionate about movies and TV shows and offered solid recommendations. Some were even like a walking IMDb with the ability to decipher a movie title based on a customer's vague description. What's that werewolf movie with E.T.'s mom in it? The Howling Horror Straight Ahead. Okay, thanks. These days, we have algorithms that use our watch history to give us calculated suggestions. But nothing beats an actual movie lover's honest opinion. And I said to the clerk, give us, like, the most disgusting horror movie that you have. And he gave us blood-sucking freaks, which, if you've never seen the movie, still to this day, holds up as, like, a horrifying transgression of sin. Number nine, having a membership card. Kieran used to work at Blockbuster and he has his card on him. So we're gonna try and use it and you have a- So that is your old Blockbuster This is my original one, yeah. This one may seem ridiculous, but it was cool to have an official membership card, okay? Flashing your special card to the clerk, especially as a kid, made you feel important. Blockbuster also had a great rewards program, which came with even cooler cards. The benefits may have evolved over the years, but there was something free every week or month. When you're at the kids movie, you can get a cool Blockbuster play pack. Free! Inside, you'll find a really cool surprise. For the serious film buff, some stores offered a movie pass. You could pay a monthly fee and get unlimited rentals, checking out one to three movies at a time. What? Is that bad? I still have a Blockbuster card. What happened to Blockbuster? 
Number 8. Movie Themed Environment in 2018, a blockbuster in Alaska famously received a special Russell Crowe collection from TV host John Oliver. And I will admit, it does sound like something that we would do. You know, buy Russell Crowe's jockstrap and send it to one of the last remaining blockbusters in Alaska. Even that sentence is absolutely incredible to say out loud. But blockbusters always had movie-themed decor in the form of posters, standees, and marquee boards with coming attractions. Stores usually had multiple TVs playing movie trailers, music videos, and even full-length features. Blockbuster kept it family-friendly, though, having an almost Disney-like atmosphere. And employees would often microwave popcorn to give the store that movie theater scent. What's more enticing than smelling popcorn while looking at movies? It smells the same. It absolutely smells the same. Oh, wow. I haven't seen any of these things, any of these cases or any of these movies before. It's been so long since I've been in a DVD rental place like this is. Number 7. Snack Section Speaking of movie theater treats, let's not forget Blockbuster's incredible snack section. I love movies. You know that. That smell in Blockbuster, that candy and carpet smell, I get high off. I'm gonna let all this love and knowledge go to waste. They stocked all of our theater candy favorites. Twizzlers, Milk Duds, M&Ms. They also had drinks, chips, pretzels, ice cream, and for some reason, pickles. These tiny pickles are hilarious. They're called cornichon. Blockbuster had a variety of microwave and stovetop popcorn, too, from big tubs to small packets. It wasn't just plain old popcorn, though. You could choose from different flavors like buttered, kettle, and caramel. Plus, they'd often have a bundle promo to make things more affordable. No place like the video store, eh, my friend? Convenience at its peak. Your son and wife don't seem to quite agree with you about the video store. Number 6. Promotions and Exclusives I'll have you know that Netflix, Hulu, and Crackle still don't make the money Blockbuster does. Streaming movies is not for everyone. The hounds, Emily, the hounds. Go ahead. All you want, bro. All you want. As previously mentioned, Blockbuster had some of the best promos going. You could find free rental coupons almost anywhere, including at food establishments like Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. And the in-store promos were awesome too. In 1999, the company set up Pokemon Snap stations where you could print digital images from the Pokemon game. You can go to a participating Blockbuster store, print out your best shots, grab an entry form and mail it to Nintendo's Take Your Best Shot contest. The best shot wins an Australian Safari for four. And who remembers bonus boxes? Those little treasure chests were filled with trial-sized snack samples, candy, coupons, and even AOL program discs. Whether it was free Popcorn Tuesdays or exclusive Star Wars action figures, Blockbuster always seemed to have a super sweet deal. The new Congo bonus box from Blockbuster Video. It's full of candy, snacks, coupons, and more. All kinds of goodies. Just rent three videos from Blockbuster and you get the Congo bonus box absolutely free. Number 5. New Releases It's hard to find spaces where the point is discovering things, or the point is being around people who like the same things as you. If you were looking to rent the latest flicks out of Hollywood, Blockbuster was the place to go. And for anyone who couldn't make it to the theater, this was their chance to see the most popular movies of the time. I kind of get the impression that it was this way everywhere, but I don't know if it was, but I could rent all the rated R movies. You know, I so just rent like Friday the 13th, 1 through 7. and. Okay, sometimes we'd get to the store too late, only to find that the newest releases were out of stock. But in its early days, Blockbuster would often offer an IOU for a free rental, so you still got to go home with something. Plus, some big-name studios even made deals with the company, providing them earlier access to the newest releases. I mean, look at the James Bond section. Every James Bond movie. Every Avatar movie, because, you know, there's just the one so far. I'm going to take a picture of this and send it to Kumail. Number 4. Renting Video Games and Consoles But get real, you'd rather be playing video games. You can rent them from Blockbuster. They've got more of the coolest new Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis games for rent than anyone in the world. So dudes, why not get your games at Blockbuster? It's the mature thing to do. Blockbuster was known for movies, but they were tops in the gaming world too. Gaming can get pretty expensive, so that's why we loved being able to rent games as a means to try them out. You know, before shelling out the big bucks to secure a copy for ourselves. 
Needed a console? You could rent that too. Can't find the new PlayStation 2? Get the Blockbuster. They've got new PS2 systems and games for rent. Why do I even bother? Blockbuster! Are you game enough? Didn't pre-order? They got you covered. The stores had kiosks where you could actually play demos. They also carried games like Resident Evil that came with limited edition extras. And did you know that in the 90s, the company hosted two Blockbuster World Video Game Championships? Yep, they took gaming pretty seriously. So dudes, why not get your game for Blockbuster? It's the mature thing to do. Number three, social experience. There was a girl who I was attracted to who was a customer in the store and she looked a little bit, actually no, a lot like Jamie Gertz. At one point in time, going to Blockbuster was as common as going to the gas station. It was honestly one of the best places to be on the weekends or a Friday night. Yep, this was a hot spot for meeting up with friends, getting a movie for date night, or a family outing. Going to the video store with like your, your mom or your dad or your friends, getting a video and getting a pizza and coming home. There was always a good chance you'd run into someone you'd know, so hopefully you weren't renting anything embarrassing. Blockbuster was also a chance to meet fellow film buffs and discuss your favorite titles. Giving and receiving recommendations with others, even strangers, was a part of the experience. Britney's, terrible picks. Erica's, no good. It's all about Zach. Number two, organized layout. They're the blockbuster entertainment team. They buy more copies of new films for you to rent than anyone. Retail stores can often get chaotic and messy, making the shopping experience less than pleasant. Blockbuster, on the other hand, kept their stores organized. The outer walls were dedicated to all the alphabetized new releases, while the favorites, anything that wasn't new, were in the inner aisles categorized by genre. And I'll always remember being disappointed if what I wanted was not there. And then the first thing you do is you go right to the counter and you go, hey, um, when's this film supposed to be turned back in, you know? The common browsing strategy started at the new release wall, then made its way through the aisles, ending with the snack section. It was like being guided through a sea of possibilities. It was a bit overwhelming, but also exciting, as you never knew what you'd find. And so that's how I saw the Peter Sellers Pink Panther when I was six years old and had little to no idea what I was watching the whole time. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Family bonding. A blockbuster night was a family night. My mom would pick one and she allowed me and my sister to each pick a video. And so it always became like a bit of like a treasure hunt. Holding hard copies. Sometimes we just need that tangible experience. When I hold something like this in my hands, it is like um, going back to your childhood home and picking up like a stuffed animal. Pre-owned movie sales, the best place to stock up on cheap DVDs. You know it's been used. It's tangible. It's a lot. The commercials, some of the most memorable ads of the 90s. Blockbuster's America's family video store. You know, we have more kids' videos than any place else. Hey, more movies, more nights, more fun. Blockbuster video, wow, what a difference. Cover art, thumbnails just aren't the same. Classic movie, heavy metal. Uh, my nine-year-old son has seen this. Number one, browsing. There's this like, there's this peace when you walk in and you go, the world is mine. I can accomplish anything right now. Everything is at my fingertips. I, I love it, I miss it like crazy. Simply put, browsing made Blockbuster a truly magical place. Walking into a world of movies is exciting in and of itself, but roaming aisles upon aisles of films felt like an adventure. This was especially true if you didn't have a particular title in mind. Heck, it was also a great way to kill time. I swear sometimes I just would go to a video store and walk around for a while and then just leave, like not even rent something. It's too much, there's too many movies. Whether you were alone or with company, perusing the choices became a fun treasure hunt. You never knew if you'd stumble upon your new favorite movie or maybe come across something you hadn't seen in ages. Knowing you could find a gem at any moment was a major thrill. There'll always be someone out there wanting to keep that alive, keep the fires of that wonderful, nostalgic, sentimental memory like burning. Okay, well, sadly, this deep dive has come to an end. I know, right? As if. Sorry, I couldn't, couldn't help myself. But I do hope you enjoyed this very special trip back in time to the 1990s. I know I sure did. 
I've been Matt from Watch Mojo, and I'll see you next time.